Uh, I'm Charlotte and I work for Design Line Creative. We're a creative agency based in Scotland. To give you a bit of background into the kind of environment that the brand was launched into, um, brands aren't launched into a neutral environment and significantly for wonder seekers, there are a few issues um, such as, you know, there's a growing concern and awareness of climate change. Some say we're living in a post-truth era where there's a mistrust of science and mistrust of experts. Um, and lots of people have commented on the kind of superficial um, and very instant culture that's, that's been created really by social media and the Instagram kind of culture. So that's quite an interesting brand for a, uh, quite an interesting environment rather, for a brand that really values science. And actually science, science tourism could be the perfect antidote to those quite negative um, influences. Um, it values experts and cultural knowledge. It focuses on hands-on learning based in evidence and fact. It encourages a real depth of understanding. So it's not superficial. It's about learning in depth about what you're seeing. And we hope that those three things actually encourage people to have a sense of stewardship for the areas that they've visited or the species they've witnessed. In terms of what's next, we still have a lot of work to do to develop brand awareness. And you can see the stages of branding on the slide. So we're very much working in the awareness stage at the moment, and we'll continue to reach a broad audience of people who are interested in travel, science, and sustainability. We also need to keep educating people about what science tourism is. So using that catchphrase about it being a fusion of science, travel, um, and learning. And we'll continue to consolidate that. Um, and gradually, we then start to move into the brand preference um, stage. And we encourage that by getting people to interact with us more. So by continuing to highlight the brand benefits and getting people to engage with us through newsletters, more through social media, and ultimately through product purchases. Now, the last three stages, unlike any other brand, really lie with the operators that we're working with. They're the ones who will build the reputation, they'll build the trust, and they'll build, build brand loyalty. If people have good experiences, they'll come back and might try something else, or they might work with that provider again. And I think that's why we're so delighted that the products and the businesses we're working with so far we know are really high quality experiences um, and we can be confident that our businesses that we work with will, will develop those last three steps. Yes, uh, hello everybody, my name is Ari Lakso um, and um, I'm the manager of this scientific tourism project uh, and it's really, really happy uh, to be standing here in front of you uh, to be in this stage of this project. We come to uh, kind of, it's a, it's a very it's kind of uh, schematic way of presenting it, but uh, still I think this is very, very well uh, uh, kind of put together. And this is put together by Alex Varnayo that was working with MTE uh, and he kind of made this together based on our discussions. So what do we do? We have up here, we have the tourist experience and then here below we have learning experience. So we put together learning and tourism. And what is interesting with this is that we developed this three phase approach to scientific tourism. So uh, in tourism, the pre-phase is like you imagine, expect, you do the bookings, uh, you're preparing for your trip, you're hoping, dreaming, anticipating. And we were thinking uh, in free learning and in learning and education, you have this uh, pre-trip uh, uh, in informal learning where you have like, uh, uh, you, you share information, you read, you read, try to understand what you're gonna experience in the future. And this was for us an interesting way of thinking about how to put more information into to tourism. And then, uh, well, you have the actual experience phase, the actual visit, the actual tour, the product, the tourism, 
And you can also see here that there's also a very good synergy in this, that uh, you know, when you go to a place, you engage with new people, you try new food, you have new experiences, you take part in new activities. And then uh, when it comes to learning experience from informal learning, you go to a museum, you have a guided tour, uh, you have interpreter, you, you, uh, you, uh, you have lectures and seminars. And uh, this is something that is like, uh, basically, if you think about tourism, mainly this part is what we have in tourism ter currently, that people go someplace, they engage, uh, and that's that. They take pictures, they see something, but the information is kind of missing somehow. And then we come to the post phase, uh, kind of here is said as a reflective phase. So you're documenting, remembering, sharing with relatives, posting on social media, and, uh, and then uh, when it comes to learning, uh, you're sharing again, you, you go further uh, with the readings, you go further, you take the experience further, you take the, 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 the learning further after you've actually been to a museum and so on. So we thought that, well, you know, um, you know, why not use this informal learning idea with these phases that you have a pre and a post and put that into tourism? And why is it uh, a good idea? Well, first of all, it has been studied a lot, so there's a lot of research uh, done in relation to this. So, what's the benefits of having a system like that uh, and engaging and, and, and having a scientific tourism based on this three-step pre and post, pre-visit, pre visit, post-visit? Post well, uh, first of all, I'm just uh, kind of uh, now uh, promoting our system, but it's, uh, we have a ready and free system to distribute reliable content to visitors, both pre and post actual visit. Uh, the system also is enhancing the experience through pre-knowledge, so uh, the, the customer, they will get more out of the experience by knowing more in beforehand. And then uh, when they go home in the post uh, uh, phase, they will continue the experience by having the possibility to go further through uh, different kinds of resources, through videos, through books, through uh, whatever the, the entrepreneur has been putting in uh, uh, into the system. It's also a system that works very well when it comes to system for uh, uh, management, expectation management, which is uh, important in tourism. So you can prepare your customer to what they're going to see, both in a positive and a negative way, or maybe neutral way, what, what, how we want to say it. And it's an addition to any tourism product. So the system we've been developing in more or less, uh, we're talking about scientific tourism, but actually we also develop a system where you can, uh, all tourism uh, um, uh, entrepreneurs basically can use for whatever product, uh, but to be able to be in a wonder seekers, it's more related to science and that's what we also are, are looking at. It's a one-time investment, which is important. So you do it once well, and it works for all your clients after that. It's not something that you have to go into to, uh, to, to, uh, to adjust and to manage and to, to post. And uh, then also, um, science is a tool for tourism and marketing. And this is something we really realized quite uh, recently that uh, you can use science in marketing. Science can be used for marketing, and when you use science in marketing, in tourism marketing, you're also doing science communication, which is also kind of cool, I think. Well, good morning. My name is uh, Hans Welling. Um, I'm from the Hortenfurder Research Center. That's a small uh, research center uh, of the University of Iceland. I, uh, I made this, this, uh, this yeah, rather schematic um, uh, model. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it, is, it, it doesn't uh, go in these sequent steps, but it's a way to, to, to explain it because most of these steps are uh, taken into uh, account when you're making a um, science tourism product. And um, so normally it starts with gathering data, data, scientific data in that sense, when you get this uh, nice uh, um, equations or, or tables or, or concepts, but it's quite difficult to explain to, to tourists. So you have to somehow to interpret this. And in the, in the case of, of glacier tourism, where we are mostly dealing with, 
is to explain that the glacier X has receded I meters in, in, in so many years. Because that's one of the questions uh, a lot of tourists ask and, and a lot of tour operators um, provide. But that's not all, because uh, it would be very plain to do this. You have to uh, integrate this in a story. Because the guides uh, were we working with, uh, the, the companies have many guides, and they, they, they use this in, in their stories, what I think is quite important. But you can also use it in audio, in, in visualization, in digitalization forms of app, or materialization in, 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 in panels. And then you have to implement this because it has to be in a tour. So you have to, uh, you have, to have the resources uh, like the staff, um, uh, the information what you, what you provide, the, the vehicles, the time, uh, the location, the marketing. And then it ends in this experience, in this co-creation of knowledge because the, the tourists, they, they pick up this knowledge and add some value to it where you create uh, or co-create knowledge. And as you can see, there are all these, these feedback loops. Uh, so uh, information from the different stages are coming back to uh, improve uh, these, these, these previous steps. Um, way forward, if uh, you want to sustain and, and maybe extend these kind of local regional networks, uh, what we learned from what we were doing is that you need these formal arrangements. You need a kind of process management, but at least give people or institutions the freedom to, uh, to fill this in how they want. Startup funding is also important, what we found out. Although it's maybe a small amount, but at least you, you can pay out for activities for the, uh, for the institutions. Um, so they can concentrate on these tasks. And then, yeah, that's maybe an open door, but you have to prove that it works. You have to prove that science-based tourism um, is working. It's commercially viable for the companies. It, is, uh, it, 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 it increased social gains for the institutions. And I think it's most important, it also gives personal rewards. Because what I said, in, 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 that's in the case of Iceland, we have so many tourists and there's so much mass tourism that entrepreneurs who earn quite a lot of money on it, they also think this is an interesting project just because their interest lies there. And not so much in this, you know, this, this every time the same uh, thousand of people uh, going along this, the, this, the same road, the same stories. Um, so for them, it's also personally rewarding. Um, so this is my um, presentation. Because they think it's, it's important, it's in their own interest, and it's probably also important.